How's it going? Jamie Fenn here. Today I'm going to teach you how to do this animated flip effect in DaVinci Resolve. Now today's video is actually inspired by an incredible filmmaker named Ben TK. He just put out a new travel vlog and there's a specific scene in that video where a book opens, you fly through the book and you have these elements that are popping up creating a really beautiful composite. And so I'm going to show you how to do the pop-up effect and also show you some different tools and tricks so you can customize it and make it the way you like. If you like videos like this, hit that subscribe button, like this video and comment down below and let me know if you want to see more. With that said, let's get started. Here I have a clip and my playhead is at the beginning of it and I'm going to hold down option and duplicate it. And for the upper clip I just created, I'm going to select it and come up to the clip up at the top and select freeze frame. I'm going to move this clip out of the way and now this is going to be our workspace for the folding effect. So then once it's done, it'll transition into the clip that we wanted it to play into. Now you have to determine how long you want this effect to be. So if you want it to be kind of quick, you can make it shorter like that. Then what you want to do is right click and select new fusion clip. Put your playhead over that clip and let's go into fusion. All right, so once you come into fusion, you want to select your median one over here and select the polygon tool. It'll make it blank, so come up to the inspector and select invert. That way you can see what you're going to select. So depending on your clip, you have to figure out what elements you want to have fold into each other. So in this case, I'm just going to do a rough masking around this first pool right here. And I'm just doing this really rough and quick just to show you guys. But I would recommend really paying attention to the details and making it look nice and smooth. Then connect the starting point with the end point. Come back up here and click on invert. So now you have your first layer that's going to come up into the folding animation. All right, so the next step is you just want to copy and paste with command C, command V, those nodes. You can hold down shift and drag it down so it automatically connects in between here. But instead of having this connect to the background, you actually want to connect it to the foreground and then drag this one back down and reconnect it. With this polygon node selected, you can click invert, and you want to select all the points that you created on the outside of the frame, and then drag it up, and determine what your next layer is going to be. So I'm just going to basically select something very basic like this. And if you need to, you can select invert on this again, and kind of figure out what your masking points are going to be. And if you need to create new masking points, you can just select a new one and just continue going on like this. Just keep in mind, do not select any of the masking points that you created on the previous layer. Because if you do that, you'll mess up the masking and it won't look good. So make sure whatever you do, don't select, for example, in this pool area, don't select anything. So continue to mask out what you want your second layer to be. And in this case, I'm just going to make it a rough masking just for this tutorial, but just keep in mind, make it a very detailed mask when you do your final composite. So I'm just gonna do the second layer to be that. Okay, so once you've done that, you have your second layer. So you have your first one, which is here. Then you have your second one, which is here. And then combined so far, you have these two layers. And what's really cool is that you can just keep copying and pasting these nodes and connecting down the line, just making sure that this is connected to the foreground and that is connected to the background. And you can just continuously create layers really quickly. Just select that next polygon node and work your way up and don't select anything on this underneath layer that will transition into the next layers that you create. So again, I'm going to do this real fast. I'm just going to select all those nodes and pull it up. And now we have a basic three layer composite. Now to get the folding aspect of it, what you can do is come down to your first median right here, select it and hold down shift and press spacebar and type in DVE. Now I actually use this node on the door opening tutorial. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but if you want to check it out after this video, it's linked up at the top right here. But this node is great when you need to do some type of an effect like this. So with the DVE node selected here, once it's attached like this, 
you want to click on it and you want to come down to the X rotation up here over in the inspector and you want to rotate it like this. See it? See how it rotates? But one thing is, is you can't just sit here and rotate it like this or else it won't look like it's flipping out because the pivot point is at the center of the frame right now. So in order to get a correct folding up effect, you actually have to come up to the top up here and select your pivot Y and you'll see this little green X that will pop up right here. And you want to put it at the bottom of the frame. So go ahead and drag it down. You don't want to go too far and you don't want to stay up here. You just want to kind of eyeball it and put it right about there. So zero on the Y. Okay, so in order to do the flipping, and we need to keyframe the X rotation. So let's come over to the very beginning of our clip, select the keyframe diamond here, and let's type in negative 90. Then as it plays through, I'm just gonna go about 10 frames, maybe let's do a, let's actually do like 13 frames. Then click on the keyframe button again, and then click on this little circle and it will bring it back to zero. So now we have this. All right, so now what we have to do is repeat the process for the next layers. So let's go ahead and select the median one here. Hold down shift and press space bar, type in DVE, select it, it will automatically drop in between here. Again, set your pivot at zero. And come down here, select the keyframe on the X rotation, type in negative 90. And then let's go ahead and go about, I don't know, 13 more frames. Well, let's do a little quicker. Let's do 29. So nine frames. Come back up here. Let's type in zero. And now we have this so far. All right. Next, we want to do the same thing again for the upper layer up here. So let's go ahead and add a DVE node in between here and here and come to 29, keyframe this, negative 90, and then go to the end and make it zero. And remember, if you don't change the pivot here, you'll have this type of a problem where you see this layer flipping like that. So just you don't have to always move the Y down to zero. You can always just put it like right about here. So when it does flip up, you don't have that background kind of showing where it's pivoting up. All right, so just keep in mind, this is a very basic example of what Ben TK does in his videos. He probably had 10 different layers where he was doing this. And he also had, you know, a little bit of a different pattern. He had some edges and like little transitions and color correction. And so if you want to add any adjustments to your layers, you can always just add it in between your median and your DVE. So for example, if you want to add a color corrector node and you want to have it kind of dark at first and then become brighter, you just add it in between here, the median one and the DVE. So for example, this is what Ben TK did in his video is that on like the layers, you can see they're a little darker at first and then they get brighter as they come up into transition. So if you wanted to do that, you could just add a keyframe for the brightness on that specific layer. All right, so in order to make it look a little smooth and not so robotic, like it's just very linear looking, you can come up to the spline and select the DVE rotation. So you can zoom in here and click on that first keyframe that we made for this node for our first layer and push F and then drag it out like that. So it kind of ramps into like a locking. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It just, it's a little bit smoother and then it kind of whips up. So if you actually want to smooth out the top transition point as well, you can click on it, push F and then you can drag it out. And then you have something that looks like this just very quick. So if you don't want it to ramp up so much, you can always just adjust that and make it the way you like to. If you want to do that on all the layers, you can just unclick twice on that first DVE node, click once, and then see the animation here folding up like that. And push F to smooth it out. And it will look like that. Clicked on that last merge node, Hold down shift, press spacebar, and type in camera shake. Select the camera shake, 
Let's add it here. And by default, it's pretty aggressive. It's pretty like, yeah, it doesn't look good. That looks like an earthquake on steroids. You don't want that. So we want to come up to the camera shake, turn down the X deviation to about, I don't know, let's say 0 0.031. Just turn these down. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be matching. Um, let's turn down the overall strength and also the speed. Let's play it back. So once you have your camera shake settings the way you want them, make sure you come, make sure you come down to the edges and select duplicate. That'll kind of fill in the blanks when the camera shake is happening, if that makes sense. Look at the video when you don't have it on and then look at it when you do have it on and you'll see a difference. Oh, and one more thing. In your Fusion tab, this is like the ultimate cherry on the top. So this is like the cherry on top of the cherry. You want to come into your DVE nodes and you want to select up on this third cog here in the inspector, the motion blur, and you want to turn it up all the way. And you want to do that for each DVE node. It's a little bit more uh, taxing on your computer. It's going to use a little bit more resources, but at the end of the day, it'll look a lot better if you put on that motion blur. Hey, if you guys like videos like this, check out this playlist of all of my personal favorite VFX tutorials that I've made. It would be awesome if you could check them out. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in my next video.